hope you're having a good day. This is Omar for Awesome SVGs. In this video, I'll show you how to assemble the cabinet for the drawers that we did in the previous video. All the pieces for the cabinet as well as the pieces that we used for the drawers were cut with the knife blade on the Cricut Maker. The cabinet has three removable drawers and the outside is painted with the distress paints creating a faux wood grain. I'll show you how to create that. The drawers have divisions inside and supports for the rubber thingy at the end of the eyedropper. This will keep your bottles organized and it will be easier to find them. The metal poles on each drawer not only help you to pull each drawer out, but also allow you to add labels to find your colors. I still have to figure out the way I want mine to be, but I think I'll use yellow-orange for the first one, red-blue for the second one, and blue-green for the third one. Now after cutting your pieces, you will have to sand the tabs and correct the slots. Your machine does a great job cutting the pieces, but you still have to correct some of the small corners. For tips on how to cut chipboard on your Cricut Maker, please watch the previous video. In that video, you will also find some tips on how to attach your chipboard to your cutting mat and how to check if your cut is correct. Be a little bit more aggressive with the tabs on the shelves than with the tabs on the outside pieces. The tabs on the shelves go inside small slots, so if they are not tapered at the end, it won't be so easy for them to go in the slots. And now we'll have to identify your parts. First, the top and the bottom pieces have a straight edge on one side and slots on the opposite side. Your shelves have a straight edge on one side and tabs on the back. We will start with the top and the bottom parts first. Identify your side pieces. They have a straight edge on one side and slots on the other side. There are several slots in the middle of those pieces. Your back piece is easily recognizable because it doesn't have a straight edge. It has tabs on all four sides. You will realize there's kind of like a pretty side and a rough side on each piece. The pretty side is the surface that faces up on your cutting mat and the rough side is the surface attached to your cutting mat. The cut lines are not that clean on the surface, so I would recommend to assemble the cabinet with that side facing to the inside of the cabinet. The glue that I use for all my 3D chipboard projects is Aline's Quick Dry Tacky Glue. It's a great glue that allows you to keep working and not wait too long for uh, your glue to dry. I also use a scrap piece of chipboard to remove any excess glue. Start by attaching one of the sides. As a general rule, for the outside pieces, you will have to put glue on the slots, on the edge of the chipboard where the slots are, and in front of the tabs. You don't need a lot of glue, you just need a small amount because the machine does a great job and all the pieces fit so tight that the glue will ooze out anyways. Take your piece to the base or the bottom panel at an angle and then press. Remember to align the straight edges together. As you can see your machine does a great job and you don't need any devices to keep your pieces together. Remove any excess glue from your scrap piece of chipboard also, and keep pressing and removing the excess. Now wait a couple of minutes and start gluing your back piece. You don't have to wait that long. I wouldn't recommend waiting overnight for this. You need that flexibility that this glue gives you. Now remember, as a general rule, you will put glue in front of the tabs or the extruding parts and on the edge of the chipboard for the uh, slots. Now take your back piece at an angle against the bottom piece and press. Allow for the glue to flow and remove any excess with that scrap piece of chipboard. Don't forget to remove also the excess from the vertical intersection. Now that your side and your back pieces are glued together, wait a couple of minutes and start working on your shelves. B 
Before applying the glue to the tabs on the shelves, test them to see if they go into the slots with um, not too much uh, of a hassle. You should be able to see the end of each tab aligned with the surface of the side and the back piece. This time for the shelves, you will need to add glue to two sides and only on the edge of the chipboard. There's no need to add glue in front of the tabs. The glue oozes out of the uh, slots anyways. I realized some of the tabs uh, had gaps and I didn't want them to show on the surface of my cabinet. So I added uh, a little bit more glue and using my scrap piece of chipboard, I kind of like leveled it. Repeat the process for your second shelf. And like you did before, add glue only to two sides. Remove the excess, add a little bit more glue and level it with your scrap piece of chipboard. This will give a nice finish once the cabinet is assembled. Let it dry for a couple of minutes and then start gluing the side and the top of the cabinet. Remember, for the outer pieces, you will need to put glue on the edge of the chipboard where the slots are and in front of the tabs. This time, you will also have to add glue to the slots and the center. Just press the nozzle of your glue bottle and squirt a little bit of glue. So like you did before, place your side piece at an angle with the bottom piece and make sure all the tabs of your shelving go inside the slots. Do not press until you make sure they are inside the slots. If you don't make sure they are inside the slots and press, you could break your side piece or your shelf piece. Now level the glue outside and make sure all the tabs are inside the slots. Hold it there for a couple of seconds. 10 to 20 seconds is okay. Remove the excess from the top shelf and also from the vertical intersection. Give it a good press. Remove the excess glue that you can remove with your scrap piece of chipboard. If you use a larger piece of chipboard, maybe you could remove uh, glue that is inside uh, the shelving. Test uh, your top piece. As you can see, it fits perfectly. And then again, add glue in front of the tabs, that is the extruding parts of your top piece and on the edge of the chipboard where the slots are. Do not add glue on the straight edge of the chipboard. Now place your top piece, align the tabs and the slots, and give it a good press. Remove all the glue that might have oozed out if you realize your a tab is not going inside your slot correctly, you can use a, an X-Acto knife like I did. Just be careful not to cut your piece. Remove the excess. Hold it for a couple of seconds. And you're good to go. Now finish your cabinet by sanding with a fine grit um, sanding sponge like I'm using here. This is 180 grit sand paper. Now test uh, your drawers and you will have to then glue the front part of the drawers. Make sure they fit if they don't, just give it a little sanding and also smooth out the edges of your front pieces. 
test all three pieces. And if they're fine, proceed to the gluing of those front pieces to the drawers. Remove your drawers. And remember the side that you have to glue your front piece on. Apply a lot of glue. It's a lot better if you have glue oozing out of the unions uh, instead of having gaps inside of the, uh, I mean, in between the uh, door and the front piece. Just to distribute the glue with a scrap piece of chipboard, align your front piece, and give it a good press. Make sure the bottom edge of the front piece is aligned with the bottom edge of the door. Remove any excess glue from the joints, and if you feel like there's gaps, add more glue, and just use your scrap piece of chipboard to distribute that glue. and. Just um, close all the gaps. Now I didn't want to wait a long time pressing the front piece on my drawer, so I used a sewing clips for this. Just make sure to use the scrap pieces of chipboard so uh, your sewing clips don't leave indentations on your material. These are very strong clips. So put a scrap a piece of chipboard in front and on the back and put the sewing clips on. Now you will see that um, there is a little bit of glue oozing out, so remove the excess. Now make the holes to attach the label poles. These are Tim Holtz Ideology label poles. They are metal. They come in three colors, silver, gold, and copper. The gold and the copper look the same to me. Um, the brads that you use to attach them are a little bit different though. But they go great with the uh, look of this vintage cabinet. So first you will have to measure the center of that of front piece. So using a T ruler, transfer the center line to your front piece. Just make sure to align that T ruler with the center slots on the bottom of your drawer. Now measure the distance between the two holes and determine the center. And using that design ruler from Tim Holtz is great to see where your center is and where you're placing your lines. Now remember, the holes are 1 inch and 7 eighths of an inch apart. So once you tra transfer those lines, test your label pull and see if the holes match the lines that you just drew. Now you will have to transfer those lines to the front piece. Also using your T-ruler, align it with the lines that you just drew and mark point half an inch from the top edge of the front piece. There is a, your line and there is half an inch from the top edge. So just make a point. Do the same on the other side. Align your T-ruler with your other line. And draw a point half an inch from the top border of that front piece. Now make sure your metal label pole is okay and the holes are drawn on the right spot. And then proceed to make the holes. For the holes I used an owl. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. It's a book binding tool, not the bird. And it's basically a very sharp and pointy tool. So be careful with your fingers and press. It's not too hard to make the holes. Just push it in about halfway through. This will make a hole big enough for your brads to go in. You need a hole that is about 1 16th of an inch in diameter for your uh, brads to go in. If you're planning on painting the cabinet, do not attach the metal pole yet. 
instead go straight to the painting. But if you want to leave the cabinet like that, you can attach the uh, metal pole at this point. So thread the brad through the hole that we just made and open the metal prongs once it's inside. Make sure to push very close to the base of those prongs so the brad is firmly attached to your surface. Thread the, the other brad and then again align the prongs and open them using a hard object like the back of this tweezers. So there you have it, your drawers are assembled and you're ready to put them on the outside cabinet. If you want a more stylish cabinet, you can apply this faux wood grain technique. I'm using Distress Paints into colors, this is Picket Pens, and I also used the Brushed Pewter Distress Paint. They come in bottles with daubers on top, make sure you get the one with the dauber, because they also have one that comes with a uh, flip cap on top and that one is not as easy to apply as the one with this pond on the dauber top. Apply your paint from one side to the other with long strokes. You want that stroke effect and do not start uh, right on the edge because that will leave a big blob of paint on the edge. Instead start applying your paint a little bit of uh, away from the edge, about half an inch away from the edge, and then go back with your uh, sponge dauber from uh, the other side uh, towards the edge. Leave those long strokes. In the meantime, you can keep applying paint on the edges of the, the chipboard cabinet to give it a more finished look to that side. I did not paint the inside of the cabinet. If you want to, you could use um, maybe spray paint. Just uh, be careful and paint the outside first because uh, most of, of the spray paints out there are oil-based and distress paints are water-based. So the uh, spray paint could act like a resist to the distress paint. You can speed up the drying process using a heat tool or a hair dryer. Keep a painting all the sides of your cabinet. Make sure you keep uh, the strokes consistent throughout. On the sides and the back, I did horizontal strokes. And on the, on the top and the bottom, I uh, did strokes perpendicular to the back strokes just so the grain was a little bit different on those sides. Once all five sides are painted, apply a second coat of paint. Remember, you want that brushed effect. You want some of the color of the chipboard to show through the paint. Let it dry. I would wait a couple of hours for creating the wood grain texture. You want that paint to be completely dry. You will also want the top layer, the one that will make the grains, to be very thin. So to thin out the paint, apply a little bit of water and remove it with a baby wipe. Remove the excess with a baby wipe or a cloth. Do not use paper towels because some of the uh, residue of the paper could stick to the surface and you don't want that. And apply your top coat of paint. This has to be very thin. You don't want a big amount, so uh, apply just with um, very light strokes. This is brushed pewter distress paint. It's a beautiful sil silver color. And now, starting from the top and the top edge of your tool, slide it on your surface and towards the end, rotate it to create that wood grain. Clean your tool and start from the other end, from the top edge of the tool and rotate it towards the other edge of the panel. This tool has kind of like teeth on one side and that will help you to create or achieve a more natural look or if you want to correct some of the lines that you just did. 
Because acrylic paints dry and you cannot remove them, if you're not happy with the result, you can always apply water and with a baby wipe or a piece of cloth, remove that top layer before it dries and start over. You might want to give it a couple of test runs before on a scrap piece of chipboard. I did that. Um, do not believe when you see this video that I did not mess up this thing. I had to do a lot of tests before um, I recorded this video. Finally, paint the front piece of your drawers. If you want, you can go ahead and paint the whole thing if you want to. I was just too lazy to do the rest. But now that I'm doing this voiceover, I realized I want to go back and paint the rest of it. Who am I kidding? Now, apply two coats of base paint. Uh, dry it completely before you apply the wood grain effect. Spray a little bit of water and remove the excess with a baby wipe or a piece of cloth. Apply a thin coat of brushed pewter distress paint and work your way from one edge to the other with your wood grain tool starting from the top edge of your tool and rotate it at the end. With a water brush, you can remove any excess paint if you're not happy with the result also. Here you can see it in slow motion. Rotate the tool towards the end of that stroke. Use the side of that wood grain tool to add more detail to your wood grain effect. I would allow that to dry overnight. Um, acrylic paint takes a little bit uh, to dry. And finally, attach your metal poles. Thread those brads through the holes that we created. Align those prongs with the um, divider and press the bottom of those prongs so that brad is attached firmly to the front part of your drawer. Thread the other brad, align the prongs with a divider, and press on the base of those prongs to attach it firmly. So there you have it. The only thing you need to do is put your Hydra's Fine Art watercolor bottles on your drawer and put the drawers inside that cabinet. I had a lot of fun designing and putting this project together and I hope you do too. If you get to make this cabinet, don't forget to tag awesome SVGs on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, that is very encouraging to me. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button next to the subscribe button so you are notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Here are two more videos that might be of interest to you. The one on the left is part one of the Hydra's cabinet, and the one on the right is the tutorial to make a distress pad ink storage, chipboard inserts, and a fabric bag. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye bye.